If you're a fan of rock music born after a certain time, there's a good chance you haven't heard of Reuben. But it'd be a safe bet to suggest that your favourite rock band has. Yes, Reuben quietly carved out a legacy as one of the most vital, influential bands in their all too short time as a unit. And 16 years after the release of their debut album, this legacy isn't celebrated nearly enough. In this rambling stream of consciousness, we hope to remedy this. Watch on as we take a look at who Reuben were, each of their major releases, and why you should make 2020 the year you discover, or rediscover, Reuben. One of the leaders of the Farnborough post-hardcore renaissance, Reuben formed in 1998 when school friends Janie Lenman and John Pierce met through a mutual music teacher. Originally performing under the name Angel, they released three EPs during this time, all of which can still be downloaded from their website, which remains as a relic of mid-2000s MySpace-esque nostalgia. Although these recordings are rough and the Nirvana reference is evident, everything that made Reuben iconic can be found on these early releases. Catchy riffs, heartfelt lyrics, and Lenman's trademark irreverent humour. These are really boring outtakes. I've got some interesting ones in, it's rolling down, isn't it? Outtake. Oh, there's a chicken in the room! Indeed, many of these embryonic tracks would be reworked as b-sides later in the band's career. While building a groundswell of local support, Angel's big break came in 2000 during a battle of the band's contest of all things. Up against a panel of 12 year olds, Lenman and Co beat out the competition and won a one release deal with underground record company Bad Music. They released Pilot the following year under the new name Reuben. But why Reuben? Well, the original idea for the rebrand was words from Reuben, but the consensus was this sounded far too emo, so they decided to condense it. However, the original name can still be found as a song title on Pilot. By September of that year, current drummer Mark Lawton had amicably left the band, later being replaced by Guy Davis, who would remain with the group until their 2008 indefinite hiatus. Not long after, they released their biggest single to date, Scared of the Police. which would garner extensive press coverage and airplay on MTV2. Ah, remember MTV2? Good times. For the next couple of years, the bands released more singles, played hundreds of shows throughout the UK, and tried to find a label to release their debut album. The latter proved more difficult than anticipated, and eventually they recorded their debut album in the summer of 2003, an entirely self-financed enterprise. The album, entitled Race Car is Race Car Backwards, would finally be released in July 2004 on the brand new label Extra Mile Recordings. By this point, Reuben's burgeoning imprint on the British music scene was already being forged and would continue to blossom despite numerous setbacks and bad luck. But rather than simply recount the story of the band from then to now, let's take a look at each album, dissect what made it great and why you should listen to it. As a debut, Race Car is almost obnoxiously ambitious, consisting of 16 tracks, ranging from the face-melting brutality of Missing Fingers to the mournful tenderness of Dusk. The sound that the band can conjure out of a three-piece is massive, technically proficient, and at times, emotionally devastating. Much of the latter is down to personal opinion, as much of the subject matter deals with the trials and tribulations of starting a band, abandoning a conventional future and modern comforts for the sake of your art, all the while contending with the bevy of adolescent issues that plague even the most well-adjusted of us. As I've grown up, these issues have been inexorably entwined with these songs, so their gravitas has only augmented. But ultimately, the main reason we'd implore anyone to check out Racecar is the simple fact that the songs are just good, with or without context. There aren't many bands that blend riffs and vocal melodies with the surgical precision of Reuben, and the bittersweet lyrics will put a smile on anyone's face. Say, 
Released just a year after Race Car, Very Fast, Very Dangerous is a rather different affair. A much more traditional rock album, it spawned titanic tracks like Keep It To Yourself, Lights Out, and Blame Thrower. In some respects, this slight deviation to a more radio-friendly sound had the desired effect, as in September 2005, the band played a three-song live set on The Zane Lowe Show on BBC Radio 1. This additional exposure was also supported by an EU tour with Canadian legends Billy Talon, the first time Rubin had toured outside the UK. But in all honesty, calling this album traditional is doing it a disservice. It still traverses a soundscape that ranges from brutally heavy metal to melancholic love songs with ease, and contains within its tracklist the saddest song ever written. Return of the Jedi follows the narrative of a band struggling for their art from the previous album, and evolves it into a snarling, bitter, seven-minute prog classic. Chronicling the financial and emotional toll that Lenman was enduring, it's heartbreaking to hear a musician fall out of love with his dream as the reality of business takes grasp. In hindsight, the fact that it was this that spelt the end of the band makes it even more poignant. Despite selling modestly well, Very Fast didn't make enough of a return for Sony, and consequently Extra Mile were forced to drop Ruben. Faced with an uncertain future, they decided to start their own record label, Hideous Records, and in 2006 returned to the studio to record their third album, In Nothing We Trust, which would be released the following year. Incidentally, this would become, without a doubt, this writer's favourite Ruben album. It truly feels like the culmination of everything that had come before, and a product of a band pushing themselves to their limit. In terms of pure songwriting, it's unparalleled, utilising complex structures, unusual time signatures, and an assortment of influences to make it one of the most fascinating bodies of work ever committed to CD. From the opening track Cities on Fire, to the catchiness of Deadly Lethal Ninja Assassin, to the emotion of Good Luck, it's a journey that ideally should be enjoyed in one sitting. It's raw by design, and the aforementioned complexities can create a barrier to entry to the untrained ear. So if you're coming into Ruben Blind, perhaps start with the earlier albums. But give it the time it deserves, and you'll find an album that's satisfying, genuine, and thought-provoking all in equal measure. In many respects, it does feel like a fitting end to the band's discography. In behind-the-scenes videos, it's clear Jamie Lenman, the patriarch of the group, was pushing the others and himself to their collective limits. It's as if all their creative energy was put into this release, to the extent that once it was finished, so were they. As much as it is a loss to fans not to have Ruben in our lives anymore, on reflection, it's probably better that they went out on a high, rather than fade into obscurity. To wrap up, aside from a B-Sides and Rarities compilation, which is also thoroughly recommended, that's it for the history of Ruben. They would continue to play until the summer of the following year, after which they announced an indefinite hiatus that seems likely to never end. At the time of writing, only Lenman still has a prominent music career, not surprising given he was the band's primary songwriter, and still peppers his solo performances with tracks from Ruben's eclectic back catalogue. And speaking from experience, nothing gets the crowd excited more than these throwbacks. Hey look, it's me! 
But more so than the band breaking up, the real tragedy of Ruben is that they're far more popular in the years since they parted ways than they ever were as a band. A fact that Lenman has confessed has continued to bother him. It's very easy to understand why. In another timeline, Ruben are headlining Wembley with Biffy Clyro. But the lack of support, coupled with the pressures of running a record label, proved to be too much to handle. It's quite possible Ruben were one album away from mainstream success, but instead they remain the underground heroes that paved the way for the success of others. We hope this piece goes a small way to highlight this vital but criminally overlooked legacy. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed these kind of deep dive videos on certain bands, please let me know in the comments below and let me know if there's any bands I should feature next. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more great videos every single week. And if you feel generous, you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash upside down shark. See you next time.